Hey, it's Mark again. And I was asked a question the other day. How do I adjust my gong when there's not any holes in the back door? I have uh, drilled holes in the back door before so I can see the gong. But on an antique cuckoo clock like this, I wouldn't suggest doing it. There's a, a way that you can do it. And I don't have the movement all the way in this clock. Um, before you put the bellows in, if your clock has got doors, you can look through the doors to see the gong. And if you can't, or if your clock doesn't have doors, this is one suggestion. We're going to pretend like this movement is in this clock. Then you're going to take some string and you're going to wrap it around. You're going to tape the string to the side, leaving you some to dangle over. And do the same thing to the other side. Or in this case, I got screws and nails and stuff. And so now the string is right around where the gong is. And then you're going to put the door on. Like this. Yes, you can't see the string that well. But that's where you leave it wrapped and you can line up the uh, line up the uh, strings and there you can see that the way the gong is currently positioned it should strike the the hammer should strike the gong if you're if your string is way up here and when you put it on you know that you got to bend your hammer two inches down to meet the gong um, it's gonna get you into the ballpark figure and once you hit the gong you know that there should be a little bit of clearance between the gong and the hammer um, if the hammer is resting on the gong it's going to give you a ting sound versus a nice sound let's see if I can get something to strike this gong that's the kind of sound you're going to get versus something like that because it has to be able to vibrate in order to get you the good noise. I hope this helps. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Thanks and God bless.